Hello everyone. Today we are learning about chemical formulas or the correct terminology is chemical formulae, the plural. Sorry, I'm trying to move myself out of the way. I'm failing miserably. Well, leave me there. Okay, um, so title chemical formula. In fact, that should be chemical formulae, which is the plural. We shouldn't say formulas. We should say chemical formulae. Okay, um, we've done a little bit on this, I think, in lesson, but we're going to look at it in more detail today and you're going to get lots of practice at it. Um, so, date and title as always, and you do now task. Neon has 10 electrons. Draw the electron configuration, in other words, the arrangement of electro in electrons in their shells or energy levels for a neon atom. Now, I'm assuming that you had time to do this in your last lesson. If you didn't, then um, the cover teacher can just move you on past this. So um, perhaps pause this while you get your date and title and bits and pieces done. And I'm now going to move on to show you the answer to the do now task for those of you who have been able to do it. So you should have drawn something like this. So it doesn't matter how you draw the nucleus, but neon has 10 electrons. And remember the rules are two electrons in the first shell and up to eight in the second shell. So as we've got 10 all together, we would put two electrons in the first shell or energy level. And that leaves us eight more to go into the next shell. And we don't need to start another shell because that's all 10 electrons in their place. Okay, so chemical formulae. These are um, the way that scientists write down um, the names of chemicals using the chemical symbols from the, from the periodic table, but also using numbers to show the ratio of the different types of atoms we've got in that chemical. So um, we've got some examples of chemical formulae here. Um, First of all, the first thing to note about chemical formulae is that you can immediately tell how many different types of elements there are and how many different types of atom there are. So have a look at these and see if you can have a guess as to which of these has got the most different elements in it and which of these has got the most number of individual atoms in it. I know you don't know all their names, but have a look at them and see what you think. Okay, I'm going to move on. So if you haven't finished yet, your teacher will need to pause the video. So the yellow one is the one with the most atoms. The number six tells me that there are six carbon atoms. The number 12 tells me that there are 12 hydrogen atoms. And the number six after the O tells me that there are six oxygen atoms. So that's 24 atoms altogether. And then on this side, we've got an, at an element Zn, zinc, an element carbon, an element hydrogen, and an element oxygen. So there are four elements in this compound, and that's more than any other element. How do I know how many elements are, how many elements there are? Well, I look for the capital letters because all of the chemical symbols on the periodic table start with a capital letter. So some like carbon are just a single letter C, that's for carbon. Um, remember, you don't need to know the letters off by heart. You always have the uh, periodic table to look at. Um, this one, Z little n, that isn't an element beginning with Z and an element beginning with, Z, with N. It's one element. I know that because it's uppercase or capital Z and then lowercase or small letter Zen. Zen, N. Um, this is another example called capital N, little a. That's Na for sodium. And capital C, little l. That's chlorine. 
okay whereas here I've got just one capital letter for H and one capital letter O that's hydrogen and oxygen two different elements okay I've covered that already so we'll move on okay you don't need to look at the um, formulas in the book sorry I forgot to delete that off the top of the sheet right I want you to have a go at looking at some of the chemical formulas that are on the slide you should have periodic tables in front of you if you haven't then the teacher can pause the video um, and give those out um, I want you to have a look at the chemical formulas that are on on the board and try and work out what they're showing so for example let's take this one carbon dioxide this is called you would write down in your book one carbon two oxygens remember the little number only applies to the chemical symbol just before it okay so maybe just pick three or four pause the video and have a go at those okay I'm going to move us on now Um, that's just showing you, sorry, that there are 13 elements in this enormous abbreviation at the top. That's totally made up. That's not an actual chemical. So first of all, this is just showing you how many elements there are. Sorry, I jumped the gun, didn't I? You just needed to write the number of elements, I beg your pardon. If you've done both, that's fine. So if you've just looked at the number of elements, we've got two here for water, hydrogen, oxygen, two in uh, sulfur oxide, two in, this is iron oxide, so we've got Fe for iron, and O is oxygen, and with lithium oxide, again, we've got Li for lithium, O for oxygen, so that's two elements. There's some more. So if you've already counted up the numbers of each individual um, element, well done. Again, the teacher can just pause so you can compare your answers. Sorry. OK. Um, we've got some more examples here. Your teacher can hand this out to you because um, I've printed it. So for each of these compounds listed on the sheet, you are given the chemical symbol, the chemical formula, and you need to write down, using your periodic table to help you, what elements are present and how many of each element are present. So some of you may have already done this for the previous task, but it, we need to keep practicing, so that's fine. So in carbon dioxide, we have one carbon. So I, if I don't know that C means carbon, I'm gonna look on my periodic table, find the letter C, write down what it stands for. I've only got one carbon. O on the periodic table, I can see stands for oxygen. I've got two oxygens. Let's just go through this one as well. So CA means calcium. If I'm not sure from the name here, I can find it on the periodic table. C means carbon. I've got one of each of those because there's no little numbers. And then I've got O for oxygen and I've got three of those. So pause the slide now and you have a few minutes to work through each of the examples on this sheet. Where there are blank boxes, you fill it out in exactly the same way as you've done further up. So pause now. And hopefully you've completed that. So I'm about to go through the answers. I think I've got them all on the next slide. So that can just be left on the screen while you mark your answers. 
I'm sorry, I'm not there to help you if you're confused. If you're sat next to somebody and you're a bit unsure, then please help each other out. I'm about to move on, so this needs to be paused if you're still marking. Okay, so we've got another table for you to try and complete here. You can just write down the correct answers, okay? You don't need to copy up the whole table. So we've got a compound in the left-hand column, we've got a chemical formula in the middle column, and we've got the names of the elements present, okay? So have a go at naming a compound which has got the chemical formula NABR, okay? Have a go at working out what elements are present in this chemical formula. And if you can say how many, that'd be amazing. And then have a go at guessing what the formula might be for potassium oxide. I do not expect you to know what the little numbers would be at this point, so have a go. Again, the video can be paused while you do that. I'm going to move on to the answers. Sorry, the answers aren't up. Okay, so for this one, you should have written the compound name, sodium bromide. Then we have sulfuric acid here, and sulfuric acid is made up of hydrogen, sulfur and oxygen and you might have worked out we've got two hydrogens one sulfur and four oxygens i've just realized actually on the previous task something i didn't clarify which i will do now when we've got a chemical formula like this one magnesium oxide which has got a brackets around an oxygen and a hydrogen the little two applies to both of those elements so hence there are two oxygens and two hydrogens i will explain to you at some point why we don't have o2 h2 instead it can be written like that sometimes but not in this instance but i'll explain why when i can draw diagrams and show you okay back to this uh, potassium oxide um, letter k for potassium, letter O for the oxygen bit. And actually there is a little two after the potassium. But again, that's something we'll go on to later on. If you've got time, some more questions to have a look at. So we've got the key below represents atoms of some elements. So nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. Use the key to draw a diagram representing a molecule of nitrous oxide, N2O. So just draw a diagram, please, which would represent nitrous oxide, N2O, using the key. So maybe black blobs if you think you need to use nitrogens, gray blobs if you think you need to use hydrogens, and white blobs if you're going to represent if you're going to use oxygens. So what would N2O look like? If you do that now. And I'm going to go through the answer to that one now. So hopefully what you've done is drawn a molecule that's two black blobs drew into one white blob. You didn't need to use the hydrogen for this one because there is no hydrogen in the chemical formula. Now using the key to give the chemical formula for the following molecule. So we've got one black blob. I'm not sure how well the colours have come out for you, so I'm going to tell you what you should be seeing. One black blob, three grey blobs. What do you think the chemical formula might be? So in other words, this is what I mean by chemical formula, the letters and numbers. How might you write this one?
Okay, so hopefully you've written either capital N and then H with a little three, or you might have written a capital H with a little three and then an N. The correct way to write it is with the N first, but I wouldn't have expected you to have known that. So if you've done it the other way, that's perfectly fine. That's a, a chemical called ammonia. And next question. The box below shows the symbols and formulas for some gases. Choose from the box two elements and two compounds. Okay, so remember elements are substances that just contain one type of atom. Compounds contain two or more different types of atom. So write down the symbols for two elements. So from this box, two substances that you think are elements and two substances that you think are compounds. Okay, so um, elements you could have picked oxygen because that's made of two oxygen molecules, helium that just contains helium and neon which just contains neon atoms. Compounds could have been carbon dioxide because that contains carbon and oxygen. This one is methane but that's carbon and hydrogen or this one which is called sulfur dioxide, sulfur and oxygen. Okay, next question. Oh, sorry. The chemical formula of nitric acid is HNO3. State how many nitrogen atoms are present in the formula HNO3 and give the total number of atoms shown in the formula. So, how many nitrogen atoms and how many atoms altogether? And the answers are one nitrogen atom, because there are no little numbers after the N for nitrogen. And in total, we've got five atoms. Sorry, that was my phone. One hydrogen, one nitrogen, three oxygens. So a total of five. OK, well done, everyone. Um, don't worry if you struggle with any of that. We will be refreshing memories um, once I'm able to, to teach you this properly. Okay, thank you.